so uh, a lot of them talked about switching to plants but if i take out the emotional thing out of the context completely if we switch from animal to plants logically entire demand shifts from animal to plants now right now there is a distribution there is a balance you are saying veganism is an ideal world but when you completely shift to the plant world won't there be a saturation point after a point also for the source for protein only becomes soybean or almond which is again very expensive like her point so if you are saying that the, all the things that you mentioned like in a row none of them had protein right so if you are trying i'm sorry all the, the food i mentioned right now yes the okay. food if we those are somebody can, can we go one by one if it's possible the first point you said the first point you made was saturation in plant in what, the, what uh, do you mean by that i don't understand that what does that like mean like shortage of like after a point okay shortage of food yeah. okay uh, can i answer that first so just uh, just sure, a bit sure, sure. so if you're doing going for deforestation i am leaving all the emotional brain kidney heart everything off if you are like yeah if you are like uh, cutting all plants off after a point there will be greenhouse gases more so i'm saying the thing that you're thinking it's ideal might not be ideal because we do not know what are the adverse effects okay. yet right can i respond to that yeah, so please. the reality is the exact opposite of what you're saying it's because right now since we are eating meat we have to do more deforestation since we are eating meat we have to actually kill more plants because the animals we eat have to be fed plants themselves to reach market weight and size point number 1 a meat eating society kills far more plants than a vegan society 36% right now of all crops being grown on earth are animal feed crops that could be used to feed starving humans is instead used to feed factory farmed animals that we artificially bring into existence every single year Did you hear that part? So yeah. what you're saying is the exact opposite. In a vegan world, we wouldn't have these issues. We would have an abundance of food because think of it this way: we right now have enough food to feed 70 billion cows, chickens, pigs. Don't we have enough food to feed just 8 billion humans? We have more. It's because we feed them to factory farmed animals that we don't have food for ourselves right now. But what about uh, deforestation leading to more greenhouse gases and everything? Deforestation will reduce by a drastic amount. It's the exact opposite because right now, why? Think about it. Why are they clearing acres of forest? It's not because they can grow soy so vegans can drink soy milk. More than ninety percent of all soy grown on Earth is animal feed. Chickens, cows, pigs, goats. These animals have to eat. That's why, if you notice one thing, although they are tortured a lot, these animals, they never miss a meal. They never get. They always get enough food because understand only if they get enough size. It takes on average, I don't know the exact number. You can say around 16 kilograms of plant food to produce just one kilogram of meat. I don't know if I'm right on the numbers and statistics here, right. but it takes far more plant food. But so it's the opposite of what you're saying. It's the exact opposite. Another question. Uh, I'm not justifying animal killing in any way, but then even if we, even if we don't kill animal, animals kill animal because that's a part of nature. How do you stop that? You cannot stop that. So that is what is called as an appeal to nature fallacy. It is natural. Okay, I cannot go right now to the jungles of Africa, put a bunch of lions in a classroom and give them a lecture. They do not have the cognitive abilities to understand us, and we have to understand that we, although we are omnivores, although we are opportunistic omnivores, we don't necessarily need. If we are in a situation where we have no choice, we have no choice, obviously. But when we have a choice, we are right now living in Bangalore, and if we have the choice to make a switch to eat only plant foods, it's only logical to make that switch because why should our actions be supporting an industry needlessly that tortures and kills animals? That's my point. And what about protein? Protein, good question. So usually in my lectures, I talk about protein and calcium a lot. Today I didn't do that because I wanted to speak about the environment and also that other comparison I made with humans and. herb was that stuff so about protein let me just finish this really fast as i possibly can protein is a compound it's made up of many amino acids amino acids means so there are two types essential and non essential amino acids es- non essential is what our body makes by itself you know that essential is what we should get from food there are nine essential and two conditionally essential amino acids for human being cysteine histidine isoleucine leucine lysine methionine phenylalanine threonine tryptophan tyrosine and valine All of these 11 essential and conditionally essential amino acids are found in plant foods. The difference between animal protein and plant protein is this: animal protein is a complete protein, meaning that it contains all of the amino acids in the right proportions for our body. Whereas a plant protein is an incomplete protein. Take a food like white rice; it is lacking in an amino acid called lysine. I don't know if you heard of that. Now, if you eat only white rice every single day in over three months gap, you will get lysine deficiency. But nobody on earth eats only white rice. We eat rice. dal and vegetables basically we eat a wide variety of plant foods as long as we are including plants from grains legumes nuts seeds fruits and vegetables we will get all the amino acids that our body needs simple example what is you know what is sambar rice right sambar rice is basically rice and dal 
the lysine found in the dal compensates for the lack of lysine in the rice and makes it a complete protein. You can get the enough protein that your body needs by eating plant food. It's not hard, it's not complicated. You don't have to believe me. Have you heard of a website called Chronometer? I, I have. So go to Chronometer yes. tonight and try putting up different plant foods and see. You'll be surprised that even foods that we never assumed had protein actually do have protein. Do do some research on that. So another last question. Yeah, so about, uh, like when you are saying speciesism, right? So, so even about insects or say rodents, right? They are poisonous for children. We know that we do pest control. So why, so we should stop doing pest no, control? We should not stop doing pest control. Why? Sure, I'll answer you. So there's two things we have to note here right now. First thing, like I was explaining even there, veganism doesn't have a foolproof solution to everything. There are four situations in this world right now that veganism doesn't have a solution to. Number one is animal testing we do for medications. If anyone is sick right now, including myself, a vegan, and I go to the doctor, doctor says, Arvind, take this medication. I can't be like, oh, I'm vegan, I won't take. No, if someone is sick and their life depends on medications, they have to obviously take them. Vegans right now, we do not have a solution for this. We are open and honest about this. Point number two. So wouldn't that be selective veganism? Like we're conveniently choosing no. which one to choose and which I'll one to I'll tell you exactly. It's, it's because only if I have a solution for something, one second. Only if I have a solution for something, can I say that you, I can only point out, that, see, if I have a solution, how can I say, if I say like, there's nothing else you can eat as a vegan, just breathe air, don't eat meat, that makes no sense. I came here and I gave you a list of options as food also, there are other things you can eat. But if I don't have a solution, how can I condemn an action, right? For example, if I am also taking medications, I can condemn someone else for that. But I don't eat meat, dairy and eggs. So therefore, I can't put forth the idea to the other person. I have to be consistent with my own logic. Fair enough? So medication. Second thing is, when right now, if you know, I'm buying rice and dal in the supermarket, I don't know if a bull or an ox was used to plow the field to grow that. Again, I don't have a solution. I'm open and honest about this. Third point, this building where I'm standing right now, there could have been a forest that was cut out to build this building right now and human population keeps growing larger. I don't have a solution for this. Let me finish. Last point, fourth point. When it comes to dealing with other animals, be it even something like a mosquito or a cockroach or a rat or even a leopard or a lion or an elephant that comes into city sometimes, I don't have a solution for that. These are four scenarios where vegans openly admit. We're not saying we're perfect. We're saying these are four. In the current non-vegan world that we live in, these four scenarios are vegans were unable to tackle with these things. And we are open and honest about it. All that we're saying is that just because I don't have a solution to 2% of the problem, please do not ignore the 98% solution I'm providing to you. You are not perfect. Therefore, everything you says makes no sense. That's not how it works. I mean, if you were writing an exam right now, there are 100 questions, you knew the answers to 98 answers, but two you did not. Would you write the 98 answers or would you leave them blank? Of course you'll write the 98 answers because that's the logical thing to do. Similarly, when a guy is saying to you, a vegan is saying, hey, I can solve 98% of animal cruelty right now if you just make this one switch. Other things, as we move towards the vegan world, I'm admitting it's wrong. I'm not trying to bluff here. I'm admitting it's wrong. I'm saying I don't have a solution right now. Let's move towards the vegan world. Let's find a solution together. Don't use that 2% as an excuse to continue justifying the 98%. It's not an excuse. I'm just saying that the idea, you know, it's just how ideal it looks like from here right now, right? <laughs> it might not be that ideal because we don't know the adverse effects yet. That's, in, that's my But then point. again, do you admit that right now the current world we live in, the non-vegan world, is extraordinarily adverse. If you were to complain that an idyllic vegan world could have problems, all I ask of you is to at least also acknowledge the fact that the current non-vegan world we live in is utter chaos. It's not perfect either. You agree the world right now? So, so maybe, okay, maybe when we go to a vegan world, even that will not be perfect. But at least we can end the forced impregnation, torture and murder of 70 billion animals every single year. That's the main focus. You get that point? Right. Let's say everything else is still happening, but if we can still stop this, why not stop it? Right. Thank so, you. Thank you so much. Yeah, can we give her next to